Like many log-based protocols, also two-phase logging has the risk of deadlocks. So we need strategies for deadlock handling. To understand what deadlocks are, let's consider the following scenario. Let's say that we have transaction 1 obtains an exclusive log on A. Now concurrently, transaction 2 obtains an exclusive log on B. Now after some time, transaction 1 wants to obtain some log on B. Shared or exclusive doesn't matter. This log will be blocked because transaction 2 has an exclusive log on B, so no other logs are allowed. Therefore, transaction 1 will have to wait until transaction 2 unlocks B. Now let's say that transaction 2 tries to obtain a log on A. Again, it doesn't matter whether shared or exclusive, because transaction 1 holds an exclusive log on A, this log will be blocked. So transaction 2 is waiting for transaction 1 to unlock A. So both transactions now are stuck. Transaction 1 cannot pro progress. It waits for transaction 2. Transaction 2 cannot progress. It waits for transaction 1. Both wait for each other indefinitely. So we need a detection of deadlocks in order to resolve such situations. And the resolution is that one of the transactions must be aborted. One way to perform deadlock detection is via wait for graphs. The nodes of this graph are the transactions that are currently running. And we have an edge from transaction 1 to transaction 2 if transaction 1 is blocked by a lock held by transaction 2. So the source of the error waits for the target of the error. So the system constructs this wait for graph on the fly and periodically checks whether there are cycles in the graph. If there is a cycle, we have a deadlock and we resolve the deadlock by aborting one or more transactions on the cycle. However, this is not as easy as it sounds because the selection of the victim is challenging. If you are selecting young transactions, then this might lead to starvation. We might abort the same transactions over and over. If you are selecting old transactions for abortion, then we are throwing away a lot of computational investment. A simpler strategy for deadlock detection is via timeouts. We simply define a maximum number of time that the lock request is allowed to be blocked. After this maximum amount of time, we assume that the deadlock has occurred and we abort the transaction. Clearly, there's a lot of dangers with this approach. We have to choose the timeout very carefully and still there is a risk that we abort transactions that are actually not deadlocked. 